Hello guys and welcome to this first rendition of Render Tip Tuesdays. And today's tutorial will be about UV mapping in specifically Rhino 6 and Keyshot 8. So UV mapping can be a bit of a pain and I have a prime example where the usual UV tools of Keyshot don't really work uh, for our case. So I'll just unpause here and double click into this first um, texture here. And I have this model of uh, the Google Home Mini. And as you can see, the texture really doesn't follow the surface at all. So we have the standard boxed map here. If I click into texture, scroll up, you can see the mapping type here. It's called box mapping. We have a few other options, planar, cylinder, sphere, and the UV mapping, which we will talk about later. But neither of those options really work for our domed surface here of this Google Home Mini. And similar problem uh, with this cable. As you can see, the weave don't, doesn't really follow the line here. So it doesn't really follow the uh, movement that the cable does. And also, if you double click here, you can see in the textures, this is a map, uh, boxed mapping type. And also here you can see the seams where the two textures of the top and sides meet each other. And uh, this is something that we want to avoid. So in order to do this, I'll pause Keyshot and jump into Rhino. And this you can do with any of the 3D model tools that you're familiar with, but this is a Rhino specific tutorial here. Traditionally, Rhino was not really good in UV mapping, but with the new Rhino 6, the tools have been improved. So we can take advantage of the UV mapping controls in Rhino. So I've prepared this file in Rhino of this Google Home Mini. And first of all, we're gonna um, focus the attention to this cable because it's a little bit easier to UV map. So first of all, I'll click on it. And in our properties panel, we click on the second, uh, second icon here, which is called material. And we will add a new material. So click on the plus and choose a custom material. And the custom material here lets us um, change this color texture. So we can click here to assign a texture. Before we do that, make sure that you click, uh, right click on this perspective here and make sure that you are in rendered mode. Otherwise you wouldn't see the texture. So now we click, can click to assign a new texture. Click more types and choose the 2D checkered texture. So we apply this checkered texture and you can already see it's going to be applied onto our cable. Um, we want to see a little bit better what we are doing. So we can change the repeating of the texture to, let's say, 20 by 20. Let's try this again, 20 by 20, apply that. And as you can see, here is our checkered texture. And we choose this checkered texture because you can see more clearly if the texture is warping in any way. Click again onto the cable and we will now see how Rhino is mapping this texture onto the surface. So click on this third icon over here, which is the texture mapping icon. And in order to see what Rhino is doing with the mapping, we can click the last icon, which is the UV editor, and just click and drag without holding shift to drag this square. So here we can see a preview of what Rhino is mapping onto the, our um, surface. So this is a square of the texture, which is a checkered, checkered texture. And here is the mesh, which is applied to the surface. So if we uncheck the highlight selected, we can much clear, much more clearly see what it is, what it's doing. So now we can change the mesh according to our needs. So we can, for example, increase by holding shift and dragging this green uh, rectangle here, increase the size of this mapping mesh. So what that's doing is basically just making the 2D checker texture a little bit smaller. 
So as you can see, it's reaching over the end uh, of this square, but you can imagine it's basically just uh, repeating in all directions. So it doesn't really matter if I move it out of this texture, it is still applied. So next, what we have to do is we make we have to make sure that the squares which are projected onto the surface are actually squares. So what I'm gonna do is actually increase the size a little bit more to have more squares on the surface. So even a little bit more and always hold shift in order to constrain this, the, um, the transformation. So now we can see a little bit better what's going on. And if you look closely here on this seam, you can see that there is some repeating happening here. And we, will get, we want to get rid of this. So you can go to the top view here on the top of the uh, viewfinder. And now we want to make sure that the left edge on the, and the right uh, edge of this texture or of the mesh is aligned with our checkered texture. So for example, I'm going to decrease the size a little bit and move it over to the left in order to align the left edge with the mesh and the right edge with the mesh. So now if we take a look in our perspective mode again, you can see that the seam is basically gone. So we don't see any uh, repetition. We don't see any uh, artifacts. The, the checker texture is perfectly aligned onto the surface. So that's basically it for the meshing of our cable. So we can click apply and that's it. Next, we want to focus our attention to this domed surface. And in preparation of this tutorial, I actually went ahead and cut this surface into two pieces because I found out that this is much easier to map if it's um, split in the middle. We can later just mirror it and um, we'll get the same result or better result actually. So I'll just get rid of this uh, second side. So I'll just click on the surface and go to the material property panel and again, uh, add a new texture with the plus icon. So again, click custom, which lets us choose a texture. So click here to assign texture, go to more types, 2D checker texture, apply. So as you can see, it's a little bit too big as, uh, again. So uh, increase the repeating of the texture to 20 by 20, hit apply. Now we can see the current result. So this is how Rhino will map the texture onto this domed surface. And it's basically a spherical mapping, but this is not the way we want to um, have this texture applied to the surface because the textures are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller in uh, going into the middle. So this is not looking as it should be. So we want to change that. Again, click into the texture mapping uh, property panel and go to the UV editor, click and drag in our viewport to have it shown in our perspective. And now we can see how the mesh is mapped onto the surface. So in order to make it a little bit more understandable, I am going to go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. It doesn't really change anything of the mapping, but it's a bit easier to understand. So this dense mesh surface, uh, this dense mesh is uh, projected onto this part of the surface and these parts here are converging on the top of the surface. So what we need to do now is basically try and align the left side and the right side of this mesh in one continuous line in order to make it to mirror it and be uh, seamless in the end. So how to do this is we go to transform, go to the cage editor, select a control object, which is in our case, a rectangle and draw a rectangle from the uh, upper right hand side to the lower left hand side of our mesh. Then it's asking for a few parameters, but this is per perfectly fine. We click done, done again. And now we can see it is um, representing a few edit points, which we can uh, pick and choose and drag around and the mesh is moving accordingly. 
So in order to perfectly map our texture onto this half domed surface, I found out that the best uh, solution is to recreate a half circle with our mesh with the help of this cage edit tool. Uh, it's a little bit hard to understand right now, but just bear with me and follow along and the result will speak for itself. So what I'm going to do is choose this left hand um, row of cage edit points, click on the rotate uh, tool and click on the left hand uh, corner pin and rotate it, rotate it 90 degree. You can hold shift in order to um, constrain it to 90 degree. Do the same thing with the right hand side. So click on rotate, upper right hand side pin, click here and shift to constrain it to 90 degrees. So now we can uncheck show wireframe and highlight selected in order to um, see a little bit better what we just did. And as you can see, this um, edge here is looking much better than before already. So you can see a little bit of a distortion happening here and still we have some a little bit too many uh, checkered um, squares here in the center, but we'll get rid of this in a second. So next, what we're going to do is rotate the second row. Um, Let's rotate it for about, let's say, 35 degrees. This was the wrong direction. Let's try that again. Minus 35, enter. And do the same thing with the third row. So I'll click uh, Enter again to choose the Rotate um, tool again. And this time, 35 in the plus direction. So now we have this mesh um, represent a half dome a little bit uh, better, but actually it's not uh, not finished yet. So the last step is to to kind of converge all of these points into a single point in the center. So just move or select the, the first row, move this one to this second point, same with these uh, edit points here. And the last thing, again, choose the remaining points and converge them all to the center. So now we have actually four edit points converging into one point here in the center. And this is basically um, going to give you the best results for this um, domed surface in my experience. What we can still do is play around with the meshing, uh, mapping. And for example, here we want to have a tangent line which goes across this center line here in order to make it uh, mirror perfectly. So what you can do is um, basically just choose all of the edit points and uh, squeeze them a little bit in, in order to make it more represent a half circle. So let's try that. And this gives us a little bit better results again. So we can uh, tinker with that, we can try and move these a little bit to the center again. So you get the idea. You want to have a perfect half um, circle with this mesh. So I think this looks per, uh, pretty good. And we can apply this texture onto our surface. So now with the surface applied, uh, we don't need this cage edit uh, tool anymore. We can just get rid of this one. And uh, this last step is to mirror the surface onto the other side. So just go up to the transform tools, uh, select a mirror icon and shift and drag to select the axis. And now one thing that remains is we have to change the second mapping a little bit in order to get rid of this um, repeating pattern on the side that you can see. So just click on this new surface go to the property uh, panel texture mapping again and drag our UV editor up here. And now just quickly move this mesh one row to the front or to the back. That will give us a nice non-repeating UV mapping here. Just apply that and that's it. So this is the finished uh, Rhino file, but in order to make it work in Keyshot, we have to export it as a FBX file. 
since I would usually use the, the native uh, Rhino file in Keyshot, but uh, the Rhino file doesn't really save the UV mapping. So we have to just click and drag, um, go to file, and I'm sorry, this is out of frame, um, go to export selected and choose a FBX file as the export. So now we're ready for Keyshot. So we jump into Keyshot and this is how it looks when we import it. And as you can see, this is our mapped um, 2D checkered surface or texture, which we just did, but it's a little bit too big. So what we can do is double click into the textures, go to color and just change the width and the height. So I'll just do 20 again. I'm sorry, 0 0.02. Uh, and this is our perfectly UV mapped um, texture in Keyshot. The same thing we can do in uh, on our domed surface. And since this is the same texture, this applies to the uh, mirrored surface as well. You can go ahead and type in 0 0.02 again. And here you can see our result, which we just had in, uh, in Rhino. So now we can just um, choose our texture, which we like. So for example, I'll go to cloth and leather here in the material uh, window and just click and drag this material onto this surface, double click here and change the texture mapping type to UV. Now it's too big again. It will always reset to one. So again, type in 0 0.02 in this case, maybe even smaller maybe even smaller, go to 0 0.008. And this is our UV mapped mesh on this really strange 3D um, warped surface here. So we can do the same thing with our cable here. Click and drag, double click here, go to the textures um, panel and go to mapping type and choose UV mapping. I'll change the size again to zero point, let's say zero one in this case. This was too big, uh, too small. Let's go zero point zero two. And I'm going to give that a little bit of an angle here. So let's go ahead and type in 45 for the angle UV. And this is representing this weaved um, cable look a little bit better. So this is now the perfect starting point for further edits into the, the scene, into the textures. But I'm going to stop here. I will hope you uh, found this tutorial useful. You learned a thing or two. If you did, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. I'll really appreciate it. So until next time, thanks.